the report of the official language committee in parliament headed by the home minister amit shah has generated some debate in the country we must understand a little bit more about language and put things in perspective language is the most important thing for a human being because only human beings have the capacity to speak to each other communicate ideas learn from each other and that's why there is human progress not only is the development of brain but what one person has learned is communicated to the next person and to the next generation and therefore generation after generation human beings are better than ever before and that's how we have conquered planet earth we are not dominating we created an anthropogenic world sometimes to the detriment of the world itself perhaps but language should be taken very seriously because it's the most natural organic means of communication for human beings it's more important than a caste religion region even nation because that is real it is the umbilical cord of a citizen of a human being just as you and i derive our nourishment and oxygen as fetuses in the womb through the umbilical cord we learn and we communicate to the rest of the world right from early childhood in the language that we understand and we know if we trifle with language there will be grievous consequences there are many things we have done wrong in our country in the past 75 years after freedom but there are some things we did spectacularly well one of the greatest things we accomplished is the way we united all languages there are 22 languages recognized by the constitution of india there are countries with two or three languages that are not able to coexist pakistan after enormous strife and death and violence affecting hundreds of thousands of people was created on grounds of religion but despite that they could not survive together east pakistan and west pakistan for even a quarter of a century largely because of language the punjabi urdu west pakistan could not coexist with the bengali east pakistan bangladesh came about within 24 year, 25 years our southern neighbor sri lanka could not reconcile between the majority sinhala language and the minority tamil language 30 years have seen strife violence terrorism bloodshed belgium a very wealthy country the seat of many european commission's offices and headquarters it has two languages a very tiny country smaller than many of our small states flemish people speaking the dutch language and the french french speaking people because of the clash between the two language groups more often than not governments simply are not formed they are not able to come together to form a government after elections after each election for months and years there's no government in belgium then look at india with 22 languages people go from any part of the country to another any other part of the country we somehow survive coexist adjust and manage we may have a smattering of another language we know a bit of hindi a bit of english a bit of telugu or tamil or kannada or punjabi or some other language we try and communicate others try and communicate we can't reach each other there is no clash we are needlessly creating strife among people language is about communication languages must grow our languages are getting stunted because the new knowledge technology new ideas they are not transmitted to the local languages because we are not creating new words we are not enriching languages they have become stagnant english became a great language because english borrowed tens of thousands of words from other languages over time from many telugu languages from other languages from all over the world every year they add more words those words become popular they are sanctified by great scholars and by popular usage the language becomes richer and richer therefore very sophisticated ideas can be communicated our challenge is not to teach our children in mbbs or iits in telugu or tamil or urdu or hindi our challenge is how to educate our school children whatever be the language telugu hindi tamil kannada or english our school children in the most part are completely completely denied quality education only 20% of the kids have reasonable proficiency at their level of learning 80% of the kids i can say with absolute certainty 80% of the kids 
are hopelessly inadequate. They are intelligent. Their parents are sacrificing a great deal. They're spending a lot of money. Governments are spending a great deal in education. Society values education and success. And yet, 40 to 50 percent of the kids between the ages of 14 and 18 cannot look at a watch and read time. They cannot tell us the hour and the minute. Between 14 and 18, 40 percent plus kids in today's India, whether they learn in Telugu or English or Hindi, it doesn't matter. In the hope that the kids get a better deal, even poor parents increasingly are sending their children to private English medium schools. In those schools, non-English knowing teachers are teaching non-English knowing kids in English. It's a farce. They are stunted intellectually. Their gene pool is wasted. Imagine, you and I don't understand a language in which we are speaking. Let's say some Chinese scholar, however great that scholar is, came and gave us a fantastic speech or a fantastic presentation in Chinese language. Of what use is that to us? When we can't pick up a single word or a single idea. And even if you teach them in the local language, if the concepts are not entering the minds of the kids, they're not owning it. They're not able to utilize that concept to solve real problems or to do critical thinking. What education is it? Our foundations are very weak. There, it's only sensible that a child must learn in a language that she understands in early childhood. If the child knows English and speaks to the family in English, perfectly okay. It's not mother tongue or father tongue. It is the language in which you can communicate. But if the child does not understand English, and in early childhood we try to teach them in English, indulge in this fraud, we are only stunting the child's future. That's where language is critical. We will teach English, but we will teach the other things, the concepts in a language that the child understands, at least for a few years. Slowly as the children become bilingual, if English is what parents and the children want, they can go to that. If our languages develop, local languages develop, and we can give quality education to the satisfaction of the kids and giving them opportunities in the world, over time, we can certainly do that. But a kid who goes to IIT or MBBS is already one among thousand in an intense competition, in a very, very perverse, dysfunctional education system. These kids somehow have emerged despite the system because of their own innate talent, hard work, parental support and good teachers. And for them, language is not a barrier. If they are now learning in English, a language which opens the window to the rest of the world, you get the best of technology, best of ideas, you can deal with them on your terms. And if you are comfortable, you are happy, you are proficient, trying to impose a language on the basis of culture is not really in our interest, not in our children's interest. We got our priorities wrong. Focus on school education. Make sure that the kids actually understand the foundations are strong. They have basic levels of learning. The education policy that government if came up with is very sound policy at long last. It understood the real problem in education. Sound policy. Implement it as a movement. Because there are 300 million kids in schools and colleges in India. That's almost as big as America as a country. To reach this policy to the grassroots, to make an impact in their lives, has to be a massive national movement involving union and state governments. All the elected representatives, the officials, educational enterprises, the kids, the parents, the teachers, and the whole society. There is so much to be done. Our kids are languishing for our failure. They are not getting the skills they deserve in the 21st century. Countries like China with which we want to compete, they are consistently emerging as number one or in the top two or three in the PISA and other surveys globally. India, the only survey we had, we are at the second from bottom level. Let's focus on what really matters. Let's not create problems where the problems are brilliantly solved by our polity and by our society. Language is one of the few areas where India achieved a spectacular success. The rest of the world cannot even imagine how 22 languages can coexist with such harmony. Do not, for heaven's sake, do not create disharmony 
do not create new challenges and problems where they do not exist. There are plenty of challenges in India, plenty of problems in this country, unsolved problems, quality of education, quality health care to every single person in the country without out-of-pocket expenditure, rule of law where everybody's rights are protected, everybody is subject to law and we all get justice quickly, efficiently, fairly. Good infrastructure, economic growth, job creation, power going back to the people, decentralized power. There are a whole lot of things we need to do. Urban management. If it rains a little bit, it's flooding everywhere. And we are complaining about nature. After all, nature is bound to give rain. If there's no rain again, we'll complain. There is so many real problems. Undermining our future. Stunting our progress. Needing our attention. Please focus on them. Find real solutions quickly because people of India are ready. They want it. And we can do it. We have the resources, we have the technology. Let's do it. Do not invent new problems or create new problems where none exist. Confront real challenges and make India truly great.